I'm hearing more and more about adults, right? Mom and dad having to take care of their adult children. I think I read a survey the other day that the average mom and dad are funding $1,400 for their adult children. So we found a video where we can react to such an idea. What'd you find? Yeah. So this one's pretty popular on TikTok. Um, and the guy's going to go through and kind of lay this out. But at the end, he's going to make a claim that I have a little bit of heartburn with. And I'm hoping you do too. So we'll see. If you're ready, Mike. Yeah, I am. All my friends talk a really big game about cutting their kids off after college. They all say the same thing, or most of them. They're going to get whatever they want. They're going to do whatever they want. I'll pay for their college, and then boom, it's over. You're on your own because that's important, right? And this is what happens. They graduate from college, usually, and they're good kids. Most of them are good kids, right? And they're like, they can't live in New York. They get a job, a decent job, making $50,000, $55,000 a year, which is decent for a recent college grad. But they can't live near their parents. They can't live in the, anywhere near the same neighborhood. So they said, well, let's just help them out. Oh, they have a kid. We want to help them buy a house. So you give them some money. What kid, what 28-year-old, I bought a house at 28. What 28-year-old can buy a house right now? Mm. I don't care what city you're in. So you help them a little bit more. And slowly but surely, you're kind of supporting your kids. All right, Mike. So why don't you just go ahead before I get mad? I'm not, yeah, I mean, this is, we're, I'm, we're in this, right? And it's really funny. I think it's, I guess I could share this. What the hell? So I have a younger sister. Uh, she's only a couple years younger than me. I still believe this may have changed in the last year or so, uh, but I still think my father pays her phone bill. <laughs> what? Which is kind of wild, right? <laughs> wow. Right? Now, I don't know, family plan or whatever it is, but I mean, there's this stuff's been going on a long time uh, and it's still going on. And he's right. I mean, I hear a lot of people because again, right. My daughter's 30 something now. And um, it's very, very common for her friends who she graduated with to be living the high life because their parents are doing this or that for them. So it's, it's happening for sure. Yeah. I heard George Gammon do a recent breakdown where he talked about, well, how, how are so many luxury goods and vacations still being purchased. Well, there's a lot of adult children in their thirties who are living with mom and dad, but then they have extra disposable income to go spend on lavish yeah. vacations. Yeah. Gen Z, um, Gen Z has been one of the largest purveyors for, um, luxury goods. Absolutely. Handbags, purses, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. So the, the part of that clip that I took issue with, which hurt me to my soul to hear was when people make excuses. Um, He's like, what 28-year-old kid, I don't care what city you live in, what 28-year-old kid can buy a house? I did. I bought my first house hack duplex in Seattle, uh, which was the number one appreciating market nationwide 23 months in a row when I closed on my property. I bought one. I have multiple friends who I've helped buy their first rental property or their first house hack in either out-of-state investing markets, or even locally here in the Seattle area. I've helped multiple people literally right at that age or younger in the last two, three years get started. So when I hear people say that, I'm like, dude, you're making an excuse. This yeah. probably upper middle class parent looks at their child and doesn't want their child to have to be lower struggle. middle class. They want them yeah. to just be able to start out at the top. So they start helping them out. No, let them struggle a little bit. It's good for you. Well, I mean, this this is not the kid's problem, in my opinion. This is the this is the parent's problem. And let's be very clear. This is my age group, right? Um, we were the ones that created eighth place trophies. I hate eighth place trophies. <laughs> but that's on us. That's not the kid's fault. The kid didn't do that. The kid would have been very, you know, okay, we got eighth place, you know. But no, we had to do eighth place trophies. And now there's a generation who expects eight place trophies and doesn't know what sacrifice or struggle is because mom and dad are helicopter parents and are always there. I mean, I got married at 19 years old. You want to, you want to talk about struggle in two jobs and nobody handing you anything. Let's, let's go. Mm -hmm. Um, but my daughter didn't have to struggle that way for, you know, lots, you know, I paid for her education. That was a big deal to me. She graduated with no debt. I graduated with debt. So again, some of this is on the parents. But yeah, it's you should be, you should be insulted by that. You, it is absolutely possible. Right? I mean, it's it's like there's lots of ways. 
house hacking like you did 203k me kevin i think bought it 19 years old mm -hmm. before he was anybody with a 203k loan there are lots of ways to get started and it's on the parents that's who i blame for this it's the parents it's not the kid it's the parents mm -hmm. You know, I think the biggest takeaway that I took from this book, Millionaire Next Door, which is a great book. If you haven't read it, you should. The biggest takeaway that I got from this book was that the number one way you can handicap the next generation or that you can ruin their potential to ever be financially able to sustain themselves is to give them money, especially as their adult children. You read that book. There's a lot of great takeaways, but I'm telling you, you read that and you'll be like, the worst thing wow. you ever do yes. is give your children money because you are taking away from them the ability to learn how to do it on themselves. And the studies that they have in the book just show it over and over and over again. Don't do it. My kid's six. I'm already like, sorry, man, you're on your own. Figure it out. Dinner's on you. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> not Come yet. The not lawn. Yet. Right. Well, I'll take care of him for a little while longer, but we'll yeah. see. We'll until see. Until he's 12. Until he's right. 12. <laughs> then I've got free labor whenever I want. I'm kidding. Um, but ultimately, yeah, the takeaway that I want for people is to – you know, even if this guy means well, dude, he's making excuses for you. Don't let anybody make excuses for you. Don't let anybody tell you you can't do it. You need to get out there and work and hustle. And I worked two or three jobs. To this day, I still work 60, 70 hours a week. And I've got 13 rental properties. And I'm hoping to get another four or five this year. And I'm going to make it to the point where I break out of the system, break out of the financial matrix, the rat race around probably 35 years old. And I'll be done because I didn't listen to people like this and I didn't make excuses. So this, I didn't mean to rant, Mike. You finish this up. I don't think there's anything to be said. Don't make excuses. Do the work. There you go. Agreed. Agreed. Well, Mike, that was all the videos we had this week. I appreciate the conversation earlier. That's all I got for you. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate you.